Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Code Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about verification in unit testing using mock framework. What is verification? Verification essentially is verifying inside a code flow if the methods which are called internally by the code flow are being called or not. Usually when we do unit testing, we do asserts and asserts are essentially verifying that the value returned by a function are as expected or not. Assertion is essentially making sure that the values were modified as expected. Whereas verification is verifying that methods that are used inside of a particular function have been executed or not. And if they are executed, did they execute the number of time which was expected. So having said that, in today's video, I am going to talk about a portfolio valuation. Portfolio, in this case, I'm talking about about stock portfolio and the responsibility of the function here calculate market value is finding a portfolio based on a portfolio name and then for this portfolio getting all the stocks and for each stock finding out the current market value of the stocks and then multiplying the current market value with the quantity of the stock and then finally adding all those number and returning that value so this is going to be I'm just going to make this as double and I'm going to just go ahead and change the interface. So this is our portfolio value calculator. Now here what we are going to do is for finding out the portfolio we need a portfolio provider. So for that I have created this interface which is iPortfolio provider. I don't have a class because we don't need to have a class for this interface as we are not testing that interface as such. We are testing this class. So as long as we have implementation of this class we are good because we will be mocking rest of the interface. Let me also change the name here. So first thing we are going to do is get portfolio and for that I'm going to create constructor for this class and I'm going to expect I portfolio provider as one of the parameter. So first thing we are going to do is we're going to get the portfolio. And we're going to pass the portfolio name. Once we get the portfolio, we'll loop through the positions for the portfolio. And then for each position, what we are going to do is we are going to get the stock price. So I have the stock price provider, which is returning the price of a particular stock. And for this one also, I'm not going to create any implementation class because we don't need it. We are going to mock this interface. So I'm going to go here. And at this place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the second interface, which is I stock price provider. And I'm going to declare a variable for that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get the price. Stock price provider dot get price. And the ticker is position dot ticker. And after that, I'm going to find out current value of the holding, which is the total number of stock that we own. And this is going to be position dot quantity multiplied by the price and then finally what we can do is we can declare a variable here we call it var total value and then we can do total value plus equal to current value and then in the end we're going to return total value so that's our code. It's pretty straightforward. There is nothing too complex here. And after we're done with this, we're going to create a unit test project. For that, I'm going to go, I'm going to click on new project. And then I'm going to just select a unit test project here. And I'm going to name it as mockverify.demo.tests. Once the project is created, you can see that it comes up with setup and the test method for a unit test class. And here, now we are going to go and add the mock NuGet package. 
and we are going to install as of this video it is 4.16.1 and that's what we are going to install after this is installed what we are going to do is we're going to rename this class and going to name it as portfolio value calculator test instead so you can just rename it as portfolio value calculator test and then the next thing we can do is add a dependency to the project after the dependency is created the next thing we're going to do here we're going to declare i portfolio value calculator portfolio value calculator and in the setup we can create this object and then it expects the two interfaces so let's declare them and for the declaration we can just copy paste these two from here and just get rid of the read only as we are going to create them inside of the setup and for both of them they're not going to be just direct interface they're just going to be mock of the interface itself so i had to add the moq namespace for that for getting the mock class so now what we can do is we can do portfolio provider is equal to new of mock i portfolio provider and similarly stock price provider equal to new mock of i stock price provider and here for the objects we can give portfolio provider dot object and for the stock price stock price provider dot object so this is going to create the portfolio and for the first test let's verify a normal happy path let's start with that test get portfolio value and as you can see it comes with an assert we'll keep that so first what we are going to do is we're going to mock the portfolio provider so we'll say portfolio provider dot setup and then we'll say when portfolio provider dot get is called with the portfolio name now for portfolio name we can pass a specific name here or we can just say if anything is passed so we're going to do anything this is again it is a class provided by moq so we can do it dot and it has is any and we can pass the is any and is any we're going to pass string so here we're saying if any string is passed for portfolio name then return and for the return we have a new portfolio so we're going to say new portfolio and we're going to declare the portfolio here so for the portfolio we can say name is equal to xyz and then for the positions we again have a new new position array and for the new position array we can create new position and here the ticker can be let's say google and quantity is equal to 100 and i'm not going to use the other property the position had three property the ticker the bot price the quantity we're just going to set quantity and ticker bot price is not needed for this example and then we can have another position and this time the ticker can be microsoft and the quantity can be 100 again so let's just start with two so this is where our position is declared and then what we are going to do is we are going to say when stock price is written how do we set that up so stock provider dot setup and here we can say when stock provider dot get price is called and for ticker here at least for this example we're just going to say it dot is any of string we can provide appropriate string here so we can have different price for microsoft versus google but i'm just going to keep it simple and then when this is called we want to return for the price we just want to return 100 let's say that's about it so once we do that is a too big number let's reuse them to like 10 each so now once we do that after that what we are going to do is we are going to make a portfolio calculator and then looks like my interface name is still incorrect let's change it now i can just change this name okay so we can say portfolio value calculator dot calculate market value and for the portfolio we can pass anything here 
I'll pass x, y, z. And then that's the return value. And then we can say for assert, we can just say assert dot r equal. And then the expected is 2000 and the return is value and then next we are going to now do verify so for verify the call is usually on the mocked interface so here what we are going to do is we want to see if portfolio provider was called so we're going to say portfolio provider dot verify and then in the verify we can say the method which is get with any string or with xyz so here let's try appropriate string so with xyz comma and here we have an option to see how many times it was called so we are going to say times dot once because our expectation for it to be called only once and next for the stock price provider dot verify start get price and here we can do for any stock it was called twice so we'll say time start exactly two times so now if we go into the test explorer you can see it identified the test and as you can see and now we'll run it if we run the test should be successful and as you can see it was successful so it ensured that the verify for portfolio get with xyz was called only once verify for get price for anything was called twice now if we change this and if we say instead of any Microsoft then it's not going to be twice anymore it is going to be once and now after this change if we run the test again it should success as expected so this is how we can do verify of a particular method call inside of the test function that we are trying to test and once we do that the other thing what we can do is now usually most of the time we end up using async features so let's change this to an async function so let's return a task and here let's change the method signature also instead of a get let's make it get async and similarly for i stock provider let's make it as task and let's change the method name to get price async now if we go here of course we have to make it as await which means this has to be an async task and then here also this is await and the get price okay and then i have to add the system dot threading dot task namespace okay so this change should do it and here we'll just change it to task Okay, and let's change this method also to async. Okay, now we changed everything async. So our test, of course, is going to start failing now because it is async. So what we have to do is instead of return, here the mock framework provides a way to return async and it's called return async. So we can just use return async here as well as here and that's all we need to do and then for the value here we'll just make it as a wait and we'll go ahead and make it as a task okay so once we do that now if we run the same test we should get exact same result this is going to show you how we can use async as well and the verify should work as expected. Now next thing I wanted to show is if you look at these classes and interfaces, most of the time they doesn't have a lot of value outside of the solution or project itself. Most of the time they are useful inside of the project until unless you are creating a common library which you want to share with NuGet. If you are not doing that, then keeping the classes and interfaces public doesn't make a lot of sense because you might not want to expose this. So in which case you are probably going to use an internal instead of public now if we go ahead and if we change all of them to internal what is going to happen is and let's make this one also internal 
Okay. So once we do that, if we go to the test, all these are gone now because it's not able to find the namespaces as the classes are internal. They are not accessible. So to fix this, what we can do is we can go to the project where everything is internal. We, we want it to expose to the test project. We can go to any class and we can use a couple of assembly directives. And what we can do is we can use the assembly directive internal visible to and internals visible to we have to give the namespace where we want the internal or the project name where we want the internal types to be visible so we can do that if we do this you'll see that the rest quickly will go away but the test will still fail and let's see that let's see that happening so now if we run this what is going to happen is the test is failed and you can see that it says that castle.dynamicproxy.generator.generation class cannot create a proxy. For this error to go away, what you need to do is you need to add another internal visible to and what you can do is you need to add a namespace here and this namespace is dynamics dynamic proxy gen assembly too. If you add this one, now if we go and run it, it will be able to generate the proxy of internal classes and it's going to work. So as you can see, it is working as expected. These are a couple of nuances which is important because sometime what I have seen in my experience, though we want the classes and interfaces to be internal, we keep them public because it is harder to test and the easier solution or easier solution, which some of you might already be aware of, but it is to just use the internals visible to assembly directive to expose the assembly to the other testing projects that we want them to be exposed. So that's all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video.